Hey there, small business owners. Welcome to the Tax Talk Podcast, the premier business podcast aimed at unlocking your unique potential. I'm your host, Jared Pollan, and I help my clients do three things. Find common sense business solutions, minimize tax and maximize profits, and preserve your legacy. Each podcast episode will dig deep into an everyday problem that small business owners face, and most importantly, explore solutions to these problems. Are you ready to solve problems? Are you ready to keep more of your hard-earned wealth? And are you ready to preserve your legacy? Let's get to it. Welcome to episode eight of the Tax Talk Podcast. Jared Plon here, as usual, going to dive into a mini series looking at probate planning and just kind of in general some topics and concerns that come up with you know transferring property into joint name, some of the tax issues, maybe some of the legal liability things and just some overall planning tips that you can kind of take into consideration um, if this kind of applies to you. You know, maybe you've got an elderly uh, parent who's looking to transfer some property into joint name. These would be uh, some useful tips to kind of take into consideration if you're contemplating some of these uh, moves down the road. So kind of a brief overview of probate planning it's kind of come into more of a broad-based discussion over the last, I guess, recent period of time, a couple of decades for sure. Um, most of that was kind of spurred on with some increases in probate fees out in Ontario. Some other provinces across Canada have also seen some increases in recent decades as well. Although there are a number of provinces that still have very nominal fees, you know, including Alberta. So depending on where you're living, this type of planning may or may not be applicable. And if you're solely considering the fees that are applicable, it's definitely important to consider which jurisdiction you're in, because if you're only paying a, you know, a couple hundred dollars on the value of your state, irregardless of what it is, it might be uh, inefficient to do this type of planning. So that's something to definitely take into mind. So what are some of the common reasons why probate planning might be undertaken? Number one, like we kind of discussed, avoid probate fees, um, avoiding delays in the probate process, minimizing legal and trustee fees of the estate, um, avoiding dependent and creditor claims, and then avoiding public disclosure of estate assets. And then looking kind of on the flip side, some of the common reasons why probate planning should be avoided or could be avoided due to some potential risk, loss of control on a particular property, um, exposure of assets to creditors, particularly, you know, if a family member is then attached to that property, that could be opened up to some creditor claims. Additionally, some instances, there could be some family court claims on there. Um, This type of planning can result in unattended tax consequences definitely has a very high risk of, you know, haphazard estate planning and um, some complications with um, distributing your assets to beneficiaries. Um, That being said, certain beneficiaries can ultimately be disinherited if this type of planning isn't done kind of in coordination with will planning. Um, Transfers to a minor child could result in um, having a public trustee get involved in the estate. And then lastly, in some provinces, this could result in um, unintended land transfer taxes. So what is adding a joint owner? So basically you can kind of look at it two ways, um, two types of joint ownership, that's joint tenants and then tenants in common. And if a property is held as tenants in common, there is no right of survivorship. So in every province, aside from Quebec, because they fall under a a different legal 
kind of framework than the rest of Canada does. You can hold assets in joint ownership and with someone else having that uh, right of survivalship. And essentially what that means is if you hold a piece of property, you pass away, then the other owner or owners then kind of directly inherit or, you know, succeed on your portion of ownership on that property. So it's kind of a direct way to pass property along. So with that said, the uh, Supreme Court has ruled on this in um, kind of a case that does deal with the adult child. And basically what you're looking there is, you know, if the parent is putting a piece of property in joint name with an adult child, that child hasn't paid any, um, you know, compensation to the parent to be added on to title, then basically the courts view that as the child holding that property in trust for the parent and that it was not deemed a gift. Um, if this is kind of a route that you're going to, you know, affect some estate planning and, and kind of pass some property through probate, just kind of keep in mind that if there is some property that is subject to probate and you've only put, you know, one of these items into joint ownership, these could all be kind of pulled back in under the probate umbrella and have to be uh, dealt with accordingly. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing this type of planning. And then lastly, um, kind of in touching on the joint ownership thing is uh, if you do kind of run into this situation where the adult child is put on there, you know, you can potentially run the risk of them ultimately, you know, rebutting the the will or you know the ownership of this down the road you know to kind of claim that this was in fact you know their property they were put on there for a specific reason so that needs to be considered along with again that you know the minor children would attract a public trustee into the picture if uh, this type of planning was done kind of incorrectly and a minor child was put on as joint owner. So kind of in con conjunction with this uh, series, I'm gonna to put together a few kind of case studies that look at the different you know, tax and legal aspects of this, along with some blogs that'll have more kind of detail attached to it. But I just wanna kind of give a high level of the, the case, and then you can refer back to the blog uh, to go into more detail. So for this one, we're just gonna be touching on capital gains tax. So typically, if you had, you know, say a residence that was owned by a husband and wife, and, you know, or I guess in this case, just owned by one of the individuals, if you were to put on the other individual, that ownership interest would just transfer at cost, presuming that there was just a transaction between the two of them. However, if you maybe say have two elderly parents, you're looking to put on an adult child onto the title for probate planning purposes, this type of planning could result in some capital gains tax that you know, maybe was not expected. So one kind of case study that would look at this is say you had an elderly parent has a vacation home, you know, somewhere out in the mountains or something, they also own a property in town, which is, you know, their primary residence. And I guess, you know, to make things simple, we'll just say that the, the property in town that has kind of been designated to use the principal residence exemption, and then the, uh, the vacation property out in the mountains, at some point in time, that uh, parent is going to have to pay some capital gains tax on that, whether that is, you know, in conjunction with some of this probate planning that you know is coming up unexpectedly or eventually when they they pass away and that deemed disposition kicks in so say you go ahead and you affect this probate planning strategy maybe you move half of the interest of that vacation property over to an adult child essentially what's going to happen then is the parent is going to reckon a capital gain on that 50% of the interest 
And depending on, you know, what their other income looks like, what the value of the property is versus the parent's cost base of that property, and, you know, depending on the jurisdiction that they, they ultimately live in, this could result in a significant tax bill that they, you know, haven't planned for or were not expecting. And why this becomes especially difficult to deal with is because, you know, the parent has now moved title over, they've got this huge tax bill, but a transaction hasn't occurred to generate any cash flow and it could be a, a difficulty having to, to come up with the funds to clear off this, uh, this tax liability. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. I know this kind of crops up with a lot of individuals you know, as their parents get uh, up in age, they want to kind of move some of the property, bank accounts, etc., into joint name to make things a little bit easier. But as we'll kind of see through this series, you know, it's important to kind of have a holistic approach on some of these things to make sure that if you're going down this route, that uh, the planning is not going to, you know, impact you in a, a negative way that uh, you're not uh, ready to uh, kind of take on. So kind of wrapping up, and as we can kind of see from that case study, you know, the effects of probate planning can be fairly drastic. And I mean, if you look at the blog here, I mean, this type of planning could result in a, a significant tax bill. So it's important to, you know, not just do these things within a silo, rather to, you know, sit down with the accountant, the lawyer, your wealth advisor, get an understanding of everything that's going on, and then make decisions that will benefit, you know, you as a, you know, a parent, and that will kind of transition your, your assets, your property, etc., over to your kids and grandkids in an efficient way that, you know, not only takes into consideration the taxes, but also ensuring that your wishes are kind of fulfilled and that ultimately your legacy is preserved because I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. So I think that's it for this episode. Thanks again for tuning in. And for the Tax Talk podcast, Jared Pallon, take care and we will talk soon. Thanks.